I'm Simon Dewsbury, PGA staff professional here at Belmont Country Club. We're continuing our series on how to think your way around the golf course. We're looking at hole number six right now. This is one of our tougher par fours, depending on which tee you're playing from. We've also got trees that line the fairway and we've got a penalty area and water hazard that's closer to the green. So we have to really think about our shots much more. Let's go. Sixth hole, uh, another par four. Again, there's a big variance between the gold tees and the forward tees. The viewpoints really are significantly different here as well. Uh, the back tees and the, the true blue tees are set way, way back. And the viewpoint there is a lot different. You don't see much of the fairway itself. You see the big tree that's over here on the left-hand side protecting the shortcut going into this corner here to go into the green. It does make you play into the dog leg. And then that's gonna make your second shot a little longer, but it plays the hole as it's supposed to be done. As we move forwards um, towards the, the red tees, 281, that viewpoint and, and the angles change significantly as well. So we're gonna talk about them and have a quick look at them I'm only gonna play from the back tees on this hole, but we'll have a little look at the viewpoints from the different tees and see how they all change. And your thought process might change as well, relevant to where you're gonna play from. Okay, sixth hole, uh, the gold tees are significantly different to everything else. So the viewpoint here is a lot different. The, it's a dog leg left, so the green, is behind and to the left of that tree, more in line with the house itself, but all of that is rough. The fairway is to the right of that tree and works around it. To my eye, I would like to play a little fade into the fairway off that tree. But you can work it both ways. If you're gonna hit that draw, you're gonna look at the tree that's way in the distance. You can only see the top half of it sticking out at the foot of the tree line and the, the, the roof line of the houses. But for me, I would like to go at that tree on the left and play a fade off it. And that way I'm playing into the heart of the fairway. To the middle of the fairway playing off that tree into the fairway easy shot controllable and now i've got my approach into the green standing on the forward blue tee uh, apparently just before i came here but the members didn't like having the blue tee back there with the goals uh, they felt that the hole played a little bit too long so they, they compromise and they put in the forward blue tee. So they play here from 363 as a blue tee. It does change the way that this hole plays significantly from what the true blue tee would do. Back there, it's very, very similar viewpoint to the gold tee. This now really does bring that tree into play. And I, I've got that question in my mind do I want to go over the tree or do I want to play into that wide open fairway again? Could I be really cheeky as well and maybe even go left of it knowing that although I'm going to be playing from the rough, I've got a really short shot going into the green as opposed to hitting out into the wide open fairway and going in with something that's probably 30, 40 yards longer. They're my options. looking at it. I'd be tempted to just go straight at that tree. If I carry it, great. If it hits the tree and drops down, I'm still not going to be too far away from the green. That It's going to make a massive difference as to whether I go 
out into the fairway or play from the rough there and then if I go just that little bit left it's going to carry past the tree as well and give me that shorter shot in. I wouldn't probably aim out towards the right hand side here and into the fairway. I would much more be, I'd be much more confident of attacking that tree from here. All right, the, the white tee is a totally different angle. It brings us much further over into the right-hand half. And again, the viewpoint out there is different. I would be tempted again to aim more towards the tree, but playing away from the rough now. I'm gonna to play towards the right-hand side of that tree and give myself the chance of staying in the fairway. The white tees are sometimes pushed back onto the intermediate blue tee, so that's something that can change the mentality of this tee shot. But I would gravitate more towards the safety of the fairway as opposed to attacking the left-hand side of the tree and the thicker rough. Once we move forward to the green tees, uh, we've got 312 yards here. The tree that's on the right hand side begins to come into play. So this is now something that we have to think about. I am more inclined to want to play the fade around this tree on the right and get myself going with the, the, the meaty part of the fairway to play past the tree on the left now and then give me the shot going into the green from way past both of the trees. But that one's going to come into play and the left hand tree can come into play as well. I'm going to use those as a, as a gateway almost to play through the gate um, with a fade to play into the heart of the fairway there. I don't want to try and hit the draw because if I overcook it and just push it out a little bit, I clatter into the tree onto the right and that's going to make a, a whole mess of it. It brings out of bounds into play. It makes the, the ball likely to drop out of the sky and give me a really long 200 plus yard shot into a green that I really don't want to attack with a long club. So the fade off this tee, playing probably on this angle towards the house that's in the distance. Um, we've got the, the apex of the roof and then you've got the three windows over the, the sloping roof over the what is I think is a conservatory on the bottom layer of the house so I've got the three windows there that would be my aim point towards those three windows and then play the fade off that into the wide open part of the, the fairway all right the forward tee the red tees again the viewpoint changes a little bit again we stepped off more towards the right hand side of the fairway it's still a pronounced dog leg it kind of splits both ways as a two-way system now the ideal line is going to be towards the um, stone coloured house in, in the far background. We do have these two trees to contend with so we really do want to shape the shot left to right off the tee and use those two as almost like a gateway that we're going to shape the ball around and between the two gate posts of those trees. And then once we get into the really wide part of the fairway we're then going to go back left towards the green and then we're going to take out all the trouble that's down on the right hand side with the water hazard that's down there as we can see there is a lot of um, rough on the left hand side so the left of this tree as well it is an option we could kind of fire at that tree if we hit it with the fade we go into the fairway if we pull it left we're in the rough but we're giving ourselves a really straight angle down to the green just coming out of the rough we're going to have a little bit less control and the way that things have shaped up this year, the rough is really thick and lush as well, so not necessarily the best option. That fade shot off the tee really does work to our advantage, put the ball into the fairway, and then we can play back into the green. Just as I'm moving up here to the front of the tee, we can see you've got this bank here as well on the right-hand side. So be wary of what you're actually going to use off the tee. It is a little bit uphill, but then once we get over the crest of the hill from about 70, 80 yards out, it flattens and then it actually hits a little bit of a speed slot going forwards. So we really want to make sure that we do get the golf ball up into the air early. Driver is probably the shot, but don't be um, scared of actually pulling out the fairway wood or three wood. Give yourself 15, 16 degrees of loft. Just launch the ball a little bit higher, making sure that we do clear 
this uh, mounding here on the right hand side of the, the edge of the fairway which comes into play off the front of this tee. Okay, as we approach my tee shot, it's in the fairway which is where I really want it to be. We're going to just take a look here up here at this tree on the left hand side. So as you can see we've got about 11 yards here of rough, we paced it out from the tree out to where the, the cut of the edge of the fairway loops around here. We've got quite a significant amount of rough that comes in, that defines obviously the dog leg going down towards the green. But that is much more of a straight shot down, you don't have to contend with the penalty area, the water on the right hand side as much. And if you do come left of this tree, it's a much easier visual going down. But as I said, the rough is quite lush this year. It's been thinned out a little bit over the last couple of days, but you're gonna lose a little bit of control. Easier for your shot directionally, but is it gonna give you your control over your ball flight and the spin going into the green? Probably not. I would still favor wanting to be in the fairway then I would prefer to be up here. So if you can hit it right of the tree, but if you do hit it left, it's not dead and buried. There is a shot that you can actually play towards the green. Okay, we've played the tee shot. We're in the middle of the fairway. We've used the bush nails, we've got it lasered out. It's 155 to the flag. Looking at this hole though, all the problems now are right of the green. That's where the big problem is. I don't want to go anywhere near that water. The flag is in the heart of the green and there is a huge amount of green and bailout area as well to the left hand side. So I'm going to play left of that flag I'm going to play a fade into it. If I hit it straight, I'm hopefully still going to be on the green, but I'm keeping the ball left of that flag and away from the trouble. Shot routine, line it up. See my shot. First of all, this is a red penalty area, so my drop options are a little different to yellow. Uh, my first obvious one would be to go back and play it from where I last played from, but that's 155 yards out. And having just knocked one in here, would I want to try and recreate and repeat that shot and with a better result? Probably not. I would want to get myself closer to the, the green, closer to the flag. My other options then are going to be under penalty, I'm going to mark out two club links from the edge of the hazard, but again, making sure I'm not going closer to the hole. I would drop at the top end of that range, expecting the ball to drop back down towards the penalty area. But now I'm leaving myself in a little bit of a, a hole where I'm on a down slope, the ball's below my feet, I've not got a lot of room to work with, I've got to play down the slope, get the ball up, to land on the green with not a lot of roll. That's a lot of variables. So I would want to move back, and this is my other option, would be to keep my point of entry into the hazard, in between the flag and me, and go back along that line as far as I want to, and then walk back and I can just eye line that out of bounds post, so I just walk in a straight line backwards, so I keep my point of entry here, kind of pacing off in my head now. 
I want to get myself to a distance where I feel comfortable and I feel comfortable at 50 yards. I've already mentioned it previously. Rowing up 50 yards was kind of a, a set distance for me. There was a, a yardage marker right in the range that we would hit pit shots to and spend hours and hours and hours aiming for that distance. So I'm going to get myself into that distance and now I can play the shot. I've taken my penalty, but that feels more comfortable to me as a distance than it would be if I was playing out of that thick grass, out of the slopes, even though that's really close to the hole. Practice your short shots, get yourself comfortable at a set distance. So even if you're not going into a penalty area and you have to lay up, get yourself into that layup zone that puts you at your comfortable distance to play your little pitch shots. It will be an, an advantage to you when you play the golf course. All right, so we've got two balls here. The one that's still out there on the green is the one from the explanation of what we do when we're taking the lead from the penalty area. This one I'm looking at is the one where my actual golf ball in the middle of the fairway, so this is my birdie chance again. Don't get sucked into looking just at the line of the foot, use the periphery to see what's going on. It's falling that way towards the front of the green. Ever so slightly downhill, but not a huge amount in it. And then just confirm this is the important one. Have a look at that. Trust your read. Go through your three shot routine. Don't forget to hit it because it started to rain. But we'll take the four. This one will go downhill. This one will go uphill. Yeah. Dig a hole and be a little bit more confident with it. Doesn't always go according to plan. But sometimes you just have to accept that you can't play your best golf and try and make up for it on the next hole. Thanks for watching. If you're a new viewer, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and leave some comments on what you'd like to see as we go forward. Also, if there's things that you don't like and you think we need to improve on, let us know. Because again, we're still learning how to do this. We'll see you soon.